Religion is supposed to unite human beings. It's not, it's not supposed to divide us. And if it's divisive, it's not religion from God. It's something else. And I think people should really think deeply about that. I, I, Imam Ali عنه, said an amazing thing. He said, Al-jama'atu ma'al al kudura khayrun min al furqa ma'al safwa. That the group with its impurities is better than sectarianism with its purity. That really think deeply about that. You know, that religion is here to unite us. It's not here to divide us. And if it's dividing us, it's not God's religion. It's something else. And, and so it's a great blessing to be in a place just where you feel comfortable. And you don't have to worry about somebody telling you you're not doing this right. You know, and, and if somebody did correct you, it would be out of love and not out of this arrogant, pious, self-righteous attitude of superiority. And so this type of religion, we have to fight it, really, because it's killing the soul of the Muslims. And it's all over the place now. You know, these memes, to use uh, Dawkins, I don't really like to use Dawkins' terms, but... You know, he came up with the idea of memes that are like viruses, intellectual viruses. Uh, and, and we've got these intellectual viruses that are making our community sick. And we really need to, you know, wash our hands, you know, in order not to get, right? You wash your hands. We have to clean our, you know, really purify ourselves just to make sure we're not infected by these attitudes and this arrogance and these things that are so antithetical to the Muslim spirit. So that's my hope really that you, you know, just the experience that you've had here, that you take that back to your communities. We didn't reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. I mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that to his prophet. We did not re re reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. The, the mukhalifa, the understanding, the reverse understanding is anzalnahu li tas'ad. We, we revealed this book to make you happy. So if Islam is not making you happy, something's wrong with your Islam. And if you're making other people unhappy, you know, woe unto you for driving people out of Islam. You know, and there are people that are driving people away from Islam. And this is, we're in the end game, people. I mean, if you don't see that, I don't know what planet you're living on. We're coming down to end game. Maybe it's 100 years from now. Maybe it's 200. I don't know. Those things are in the knowledge of God. But our Prophet said, I was sent and, and the end of time are like these two. And he put his wusta and his sababa together. Just like that. I was sent and the hour is like this. That was 1400 years ago. And in terms of how long humans have been here, it's not a long time, 1400 years. It's, a, it's a, just a flash. So this is a time for people to have a lot of rahab, you know, just expansiveness in their hearts for people. Baza, baza, I wish I could quote it in, in Persian, but you know, we're in the city of Mawlana, Jalaluddin, and he, he has a beautiful qasida which is in the entrance to his maqam. Come, come again, come. You know, whatever you've done. This isn't a caravan of despair. You know, sinner, if you've broken your vow a thousand times, just come back. <laughs> the door's open. And anybody that closes it is a shaitan. You know, and there's people closing that door on people that need to hear that message. You know, because this world can defile you. But no matter how defiled you are, Allah's door is open. No matter what's happened to you, Allah's door is open. I mean, we have testimony in the hadith to a mass murderer who was given Tawbah. He killed a hundred people and he was given Tawbah. 
This door is open and people, we need to open it up and let people come in with all their faults and all their flaws and all their dysfunctionalities and all their problems. Just open the door and let people come in. Hudayf al-Yamani, he said, the end of time won't come until the Muslims are like a big rock in a river. They don't drink from it and they don't let other people drink from it. And he said, and the one seeing it is not like the one telling it. So don't be like that rock that doesn't let the river flow and let people drink from it. This people need, they're dying of thirst out there. They're dying of spiritual thirst. Really, if we had in America spiritual disability as a possibility to get insurance and not go to work, we wouldn't have anybody working anymore. There are people... People are on antidepressants, they're on anxiolytics. They're really not well. People aren't well. And they need, the reason they're not well is because they're not fulfilling their purpose. You cannot be well unless you're being human. We were created to be human. And the way that we are human is to surrender. It's just to surrender, to give up, to not fight Allah. And, and that's rida, it's contentment, it's when the qadr comes, mashallah, qadr Allah, masha'an fa'al. I was in a taxi in Saudi Arabia, and this, this Saudi man, he said, why do they hate us in America? When he, I told him I was from America. He said, why do they hate us? I said, subhanAllah, that's what they ask me all the time about you guys. And he said, I don't hate them. He said, he said, I said, well, that partly it's because they think that 14 of the 19 hijackers were from your country when 9-11 happened. And he said, do they know about the Qatar? And I said, you know, some people, not many. He said, you need to teach them about the Qatar because it stops that hatred from coming when things happen. I mean, that's a simple taxi driver. Bedouin taxi driver in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you know, who's, I mean, that's a deep theological insight. You know, that people need to, to see that Allah allows things to happen in the world for a wisdom. Even heinous, evil things that happen. There's a reason why Allah has allowed us, enabled us with our free will to do these things. So, I mean, that, anything. And then I also want to just, I've been thinking a lot, just being here, we've been in such blessings. We're right next door to real calamity, Syria. Really pray for them. This is Ramadan. Pray for our brothers and sisters in Syria. I mean, Palestine. You know, this one Syrian man said to me, why, aren't, why isn't anybody doing anything? Why, look, why there, nobody's doing anything. I said, welcome to the club. The Palestinians have been in that club for a long, long time. The Kashmiris have been in that club. The Shashan. You know, there's a lot of people in that club. You know, but at least we can do for them is pray. And just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them. And, and help the people that are helping them. You know, because they really... It's a beautiful country, Syria. I know people that... I, I've never been there, but, you know... It, and now it's just people living really in the most trying situation. So make dua for the people of Syria in this Ramadan. Really ask Allah when you break your fast at Sahur. People of Egypt, you know... I mean, Egyptians, they're just a really... You know, I was in Egypt and, and I, it, I marveled at how, what good nature people were in despite the incredible horrific conditions of Cairo. When I was in Cairo, you know, they just had a sense of humor and they, they you know, they're really, I mean, what's happening now, it's just tragic. You know, really tragic. And these are, these are you know, these are our brothers and sisters. First and foremost in, in humanity, you know, just wherever human beings suffer, we should be troubled by it. But... But as brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the double bond that we have, the Adamic bond that makes us human, that makes us you know, want to eliminate oppression and suffering for others. But then that bond that binds us as, as Muslims is, is, a, is a powerful bond. So this is our ummah, you know, and so make dua.